Hello, everybody. My name is Carol Marks, and this is where I host my remarks on glamour, pop culture, and front page news. This podcast is a member of Give Me Liberty Media. Now, let's get right to it. This intro is way too long. Hello, hello. Where has the weekend gone? I would like to ask. That is not the question of the day. All right, we need to go on into our topics here that I put out on X this morning. We have a group of seven squatted in Georgia House alongside homeowners' months-old mummified body played lotto machines with his money. This is from the New York Post, of course, where I get most of these stories. Ugh. A group of seven burglars are accused of squatting in squatting in and looting a dead man's Georgia home while his months old mummified body was still inside, even spending his cash on lotto tickets. These people are not accused of murdering him. Apparently they broke into his house, but he had already died. I find that suspicious. And the next door neighbor said that he knew that they knew that he died. That's suspicious. Let's read on. Cobb County police responded to the home in Smyrna, Georgia, in early October for a wellness check, but instead found Robert Westbrook, the 71-year-old homeowner and lone occupant, dead in the bathtub. He was in a severe state of decomposition. It's called mummification, the detective said. Detectives said that Westbrook died of natural causes and his body had been in the bathtub for around three months. However, they also found evidence that someone else had taken up residence in the home during those three months. Uh, They ransacked the drawers. The drawers were overturned. His master bedroom was completely disheveled. They also had uh, evidence that somebody was still living there because the trash that was in the trash can was still fairly new. Um, So police said they received a call the day after the wellness check from a neighbor of Westbrook who knew that he had died, claiming that they saw people on his property. So if you knew he died, why a day ago? I don't, I don't understand that part of the story. Officers went to check on the home again and found four suspects with pieces of Westbrook's property loaded into their vehicle, ready to abscond with the dead man's belongings, including his money, electronics, and even his car. Goodness gracious. Did this man not have any family that was checking on him? That's, ooh, I need to, mm-mm. I need to make sure people know me. I don't want to, this is my biggest fear, I guess, is to die alone, nobody checking on me. Goodness. Um, I mean, they broke into someone's home. They saw him deceased on the ground. And instead of saying, hey, we messed up, let's call 911, we found the, this guy dead. They decided to just live there. <clears throat> I guess they moved his body into the bathtub. Unsuspecting neighbors were unnerved by their neighbor's demise and the squatters who made themselves at home. They had no idea he was dead. <clears throat> had no, do- no idea that he was robbed. It was quite shocking. Well, there you go. But they did find the guys. They did, they did g- catch him. Who knows what's going to happen to him, though. All right, moving on to this other weird story. Kind of confusing. I had to read it a couple times, and I still don't quite understand it. So I'm just going to read it word for word and see if you can figure it out. Killer fakes bear attack to cover up hiker's murder, but phony 911 call. Stolen ID exposed bizarre plot. All right, here we go. This happened in Tennessee, and it involves Alabama somehow, too. All right, here we go. A Tennessee parolee's, okay, a Tennessee parolee killed a hiker and tried to pass it off as a bear attack by staging a phony 911 call and using a stolen ID, cops said. All right, I get that first part. Nicholas Wayne Hamlet allegedly called 911 earlier this month pretending to be Brandon Andrade, telling the operator he was gravely wounded after a bear chased him off a cliff while hiking in Hamilton County. Sheriffs told local media when rescues when rescuers arrived, they found a bloody corpse at the bottom of the cliff with Andrade's ID. But an autopsy revealed that the body was not Andrade, and officials have no idea who the dead man actually is. Law enforcement told the uh, TV Atlanta. 
Hamlet is believed to have stolen Andrade's identity to escape parole, then faked his death for an unknown reason. He's now wanted for the murder of the hiker, officials said. Hamlet used a different fake name when deputies questioned him about the 911 call and then skipped town before they determined his real name. Hamlet had been pre previously arrested after luring a man into the woods in Alabama. Hamlet, well, what, what does that mean? Lured him into the woods and then what? Hamlet is still at large, but he isn't. So I think it, this Hamlet guy had previously been arrested after, it doesn't say what, what happened with that. Mm -hmm. Hamlet is still at large, but he isn't out of the woods yet. Ha ha. Police considered him armed and dangerous, blah, blah, blah. Okay, there you go. And I think they said he may have come back to Alabama. I'm not sure. Well, I'll be on the lookout for that one, I guess. All right, we're moving on to the last topic here, and then we'll get to the question of the day. Takeout addict steals $170,000 from company, but blows it on Uber Eats and DoorDash. Oh my gosh, I need to see a picture of this lady. <clears throat> An Idaho woman was caught stealing over $170,000 from her employer, but blew it, most of it, on ordering from food delivery apps. This is so sad. First of all, that she stole the money. Second of all, that she spent it on buying food on delivery apps. Because, I mean, that is robbery. I mean, these delivery apps with their fees, they will rob you. So I guess she did need to steal some money. I don't know. Uh, Charlene Smith, <clears throat> I'm so sorry. I don't know what is wrong with my damn voice this morning. Charlene Smith, formerly an office manager for a now defunct tractor supply company out of Nampa, was caught embezzling the six-figure sum from 2021 to 2022 before the company closed its door around 2023, probably because she was stealing from them. Smith of Idaho City spent much of the cash on DoorDash, Uber Eats, and Facebook Pay. She also wrote herself checks from company funds and deposited cash into a personal account on Cash App. Goodness. Okay, that's it. I, that's there's really nothing to this story except I just thought it was strange that she spent most of it on these food delivery apps. Uh, I guess people don't cook for themselves anymore. All right, so I guess I need to move on to the question of the day. This is a short one today, but that's okay. It needs to be short. Okay, here's your question of the day. We only have a handful of days left, right? Well, a couple, well, we have a few days left until we vote November 5th. Uh, maybe some of you have already early voted. I'm not sure. But election day is November 5th. Hopefully, we'll know the result that night. But it's, you know, who knows? People are saying it might take a week, which I think is total BS. My question for you is, what will Kamala do after she loses this election? Now, she was a senator but before vice president. She, obviously, she'll finish out her vice presidency uh, for the next few months. <clears throat> But what will she do next? Will she go, will she, they've already have a senator in her place. So what will she do? What, will, what What? do you think Kamala will do after she loses the race and leaves the White House? That's the question of the day for you. I cannot wait to hear some of your answers. Hopefully, I don't know, you can be serious, you can be joking, I don't care. You can be wrong answers only, I don't care. Tell me what you think her she'll do after she leaves the White House. Okay, gotta go. Thanks for listening. Bye. What's that? Who pays your salary? What's that? Who pays? What's that? We're not a democracy.